Good morning, JBLM. Welcome to the October Garrison Update. Um, just a couple admin remarks before I hand it over to Colonel Duncan. Thank you to the Red Cross for providing coffee. We appreciate it. Um, don't forget we have service provider tables over here to my right, so please take the opportunity to visit them. A lot of good information. We have a roster that will be going around, so please check the roster, make any updates, additions, deletions to uh, your section on that roster. That way we can keep you informed of uh, things that are going on and send the slides out to you. Um, the slides will be posted on the website, so please check uh, the websites, the JBLM website, the MWR website, and the DPFR website for the slides. And then just as a reminder, we do record this, so if you have a question, please wait for Steve or Shamika. They will bring the microphone to you so that we can capture the question. And with that, I will turn it over to Colonel Duncan. Thank you. All right, um, thank you all for attending. We have, as always, a ton of good information in these slides, and we've, over the past couple months, we've presented a lot of the inform additional information that you all have requested, and I'm gonna ask at the end, I'll give you a little bit of time to think about this, through, so please think about this as we're going through any, uh, any new information that we are not showing you, or haven't shown you in the past month or two. We don't want to show every single thing every month because it would turn us into a two hour meeting, right? But you know, we show traffic and we show gates and we show construction, uh, bits and pieces of that because there are so many moving pieces across this amazing base. This place is, is still huge. I've been here two months and I still have seen probably a third of it. Um, so any, anyway, we're not gonna be able to show you everything every month, but please show us, please tell us the stuff you would like to see in, in future updates. Um, it, this to reemphasize the diversity of this joint base, we have, we also share some of this information with Yakima because some of it applies statewide. JBLM exists because Yakima is there to support our training. Um, and so a lot of this goes out to them, so if you think of anything they need to see. Um, still a ton of construction and new innovations going on on JBLM. You see the I-5 construction, you also see some of the some of the partners, uh, AFES with the exchange. Um, the, w this upcoming year, what you will see a lot of is we are hearing definitely, we are hearing good initiatives for barracks maintenance. We're hearing uh, that um, from all the way from DOD senior leaders that we will get funding for what we need to rejuvenate the barracks. What we don't want is another thing, anything else like we had, like we've gone through with the family housing, which we are doing well at re at, at recovering. You know, we still have approximately 60 di displaced families. That we think that number is kind of peaked out and is coming down now, um, but the first priority is to take care of the families. So we've so we've so we've had to displace quite a few and then fix the home and bring them back in. We don't want to do that with barracks. We have very little barracks space to be able to maneuver across the base, so we wanna make sure we fix the barracks now before they get any, before they get any worse. The Army has specifically, uh, the Army and the Air Force have specifically said over time they're gonna take a little bit of risk on installations and have not funded to the 100% level that we've needed to maintain them. So the barracks aren't as good as they need to be, but that's why I make this comment is that we are getting good uh, signals that we should get good funding for that. So you should see a lot of progress on not only some the new milk on barracks that you've already seen go up, but in specifically in the barracks to take care of our airmen and soldiers. We just crossed over the end of year, which is a huge thing in the government. So the end of the end of the fiscal year. So if you are any way involved in the money processes, congratulations, you survived another year. <clears throat> the I, from everything I've heard, this one went pretty well. Um, you all have been in the Army for, and the Air Force for a while. You've seen it go well and go not so well. I think this one went pretty well, and uh, I think we're going to congratulate actually some of our folks later on, not in this meeting, but, but I just wanted to say thank you to all the, if you're involved in, any, in the resource management realm at all, thank you. We do have, the, you all have heard about the, um, we had a great, the FUFARA, the Olympia Yacht Club sponsored a lot of our airmen and soldiers out there, so prepare for that next year. They want to do it again next year and recognize airmen and soldiers. There's also a, a similar one in Tacoma. Just, I just wanted to throw that out because I, I received a note back from those guys that said they, were, they love having the opportunity to recognize 
the soldiers and airmen. So please think about that for next year. And there's, there's a hundred opportunities like that. We have a very supportive community. We met with Seattle and a lot of our uh, local chamber. We met with the, the school district as, uh, slash leadership, Lakewood leadership team last night. They have a lot of amazing initiatives where the community wants to take care of our community and they want our input to, you know, to form one community across this whole area. We live in an amazing area. We're already in the Pacific Northwest, which is an amazing place to live. And then we, we have a very strong supportive community. So please continue to get out there if, with your individual unit assignments, uh, that, uh, the, the first core order that, that sort of assigns, because they love seeing you out there. They love having airmen and soldiers at their, at their meetings, uh, in, in their towns, at their, of course at their big events, you know, Memorial Day, Veterans Day, things like that are you know, relatively standard, but they love seeing you at their school board meetings, things like that. So if you have the opportunity, please get out there and support them. Um, a, couple, you know, a, a couple small things just to prepare for. The Real ID Act is, uh, is, is about one year out from official implementation. I would suggest you get with your state and, and make sure that your state Obviously, pass this information down, please. Make sure your state, in, your state ID specifically supports the Real ID Act. We will put out more information on which states. There's tons of information out there. Um, we don't have it in this particular briefing, but we will send it out in a leader update that you can disperse down about which states have not signed on yet or which states have what's called an enhanced driver's license or a Real ID. There's, there's some technicalities in there. We'll send it out. We'll send out some information. But, but obviously, you know, each, each airman and soldier is going to have to check with their own state as to what they need to do because they might need to get an, even if they have a real ID state cert, uh, driver's license, they might have to get a new one that, that, is, that has the enhanced uh, capabilities on it. Um, okay, before I turn it over, we're going to recognize an airman here in a second, but um, I want to close up my opening comments. And, sir, do you have anything? Y across the Pacific, and we've had a lot of great things that uh, you may not know about. One of them is I've got a new Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Pospisil. He's been here about 30 days. He's currently in Alaska, but we do have his lovely bride, Terry, here today. And he's spent the first 60 days, or 30 days, really going around the footprint of the garrison, uh, of the installation, rather. And so we've been uh, really point to point with the garrison commander on improvements that we're going to make across JBLM based on his reconnaissance. And uh, so I want to thank the garrison for doing all that. We've talked about RV storage. We've talked about housing and the, the like. So I want you to know that he hit the ground running, and you'll get the opportunity to see him next month. Uh, had a really great event uh, last week, or I guess, X, you'll have to tell me. My timings are a little messed up. Best medic, Army Best Medic competition was held at Joint Base Lewis-McChord. This is where every unit in the Army brought their uh, candidates to be the, recognized as the Army's best medic. It came. The winners were from 7th Infantry Division, 1-2, so give them a round of applause. They own the best medics. You, know, you heard Sky talk a little bit about housing. The Chief of Staff of the Army says people are first. So when he talks about an initiatives, he just went up to Alaska to go look at another uh, unit in the Corps saw their barracks, saw their infrastructure, and said, okay, we got to get our head around this. Because as Sky said, the Army, from an Army perspective, hasn't put a lot of that money into the, the fund streams. I, I am as optimistic as, uh, as Sky is. So, you know, as we look at barracks improvements, you know, we focused on family housing. We're going to start looking at barracks pretty hard. I would ask you to tell your, your, uh, your airmen and your soldiers, though, we're going to do a thing called fall cleanup and spring cleanup. And that's where we have units that own housing areas, and they own them all the time for oversight. And so you're going to see uh, those two times in the, in the year change the command going out to do fall cleanup. But that's not for soldiers to come out of units to clean up your housing area. So as, as we drive through housing areas, we see mattresses on front lawns, uh, some state of disrepair. I would ask all of you to tell your, your airmen and your soldiers they have a responsibility for their neighborhoods. And you know we want to live in the best environment possible. So there's a lot of effort going on to family housing, but I'd ask us to make sure that the residents are as committed as a chain of command on making sure this is a great family uh, living area. So I'd ask for your help on that. Uh, the Corps instituted a policy for all Army folks about housing NCOs. 
So if you're married to a soldier, or your soldiers are living in housing on the installation and they've got a problem, that housing NCO, is, that's his sole or her sole duty, is to interact with our residents to make sure that that housing area is being maintained properly. And any issues you have are bubbled up through the housing NCO. That's the primary point of contact. So when I go to a town hall, I hear people say, hey, I got these issues. I said, okay, who's your housing NCO? Some of them know them, which is awesome. Some of them don't. So I'd ask you to reinforce that and hold, hold them accountable, that housing NCO in your area, to, uh, to push those issues up that we can solve. And as Sky said, we meet monthly now with every tenant commander on the installation to talk about your housing issues. Uh, and what's interesting is we do a newcomer's brief every month, and it's no longer the comments I'm getting about housing or not, hey, I've got mold or I've got this. It's how come I can't get into housing? You know, I want to move on post, which is, that's a different narrative and a different problem set. So we're pretty excited that people want to, are asking us why they can't move on post faster. Um, so that's what we're focused on. Uh, it'll be a busy uh, next 60 days with VIPs coming. We're going to host a few congressional delegations. So uh, Representative Spear is coming. That'll be a big event for us because she's focused on sexual assault in the military. And so you'll hear a little bit about that, I'm sure. Uh, and the last thing I'd say is, you know, or the second to last, the Corps is going to be gone. We uh, big events in uh, Hawaii coming up as well as Japan. Uh, 7th Infantry Division, they can tell you all the great things they're doing. It's going to start to ramp up pretty hard. And then next year we'll, we'll go putting brigades in the Pacific for 10 months. So it will be a pretty sporty op tempo time for the Corps and all of our Army units on it. Finally, yes, we did go through end of year, uh, but I'm not as... Uh, ready to pat us on the back as Sky is. Because we have a fifth quarter. If you didn't know what the fifth quarter is, that's when the end of the year goes and we rush to say we saw, spent all our money, and then starting tomorrow, we start de-obligating all of that. And so in about a month, we're going to find out we spent all our money, and then we de-obligated $6 million that we could have used. So I'm going to congratulate people in November on the great work they did. So I would just ask all Army units, because what, what we had happened two nights ago was about 10 minutes before the shutdown, somebody de-obligated $6,000, five minutes before end of year closeout. So commanders in the Army, I'd ask you, make sure Sergeant Valesky out there is not de-obligating that engine that you needed that was already put, because ForceCom will take all that money from us next quarter. So if there's any issues you need, we're excited to have you all here. It's great to see you. Corps in a warfighter right now with the 101st and 29th. So if I step out, we'll be going to fight on the peninsula here in about 20 minutes. So have a great day. Cool. <laughs> All right. Sir, General Brunson, anything? And Colonel Stainpine. Hey, uh, team. Welcome to McCord Field. Always great to have the JBLM team here. Um, the 62nd Airlift Wing and Team McCord has been incredibly busy over the summer. Um, we had our largest exercise in Air Mobility Command, an exercise called Mobility Guardian. Um, we actually brought the 82nd Airborne in for a, um, a forcible entry into the Yakima Range and a great training event. And um, most of that was spearheaded out of Team Accord here, and we're really proud of um, how that executed. We also have done some international partner engagements recently. So we had the Indian Air Force out, and we did some training with them. We recently had um, some Koreans out from their transcom, and we did some partnership with them to show them how logistics are done. Um, and we've, so we've been really busy trying to make sure that we've been good partners and also getting our own training executed. That's on top of multiple um, POTUS movements this summer. We've been, we've been really, really pushing it hard. Um, we've uh, also been focusing on our airmen, um, doing some resiliency tactical pauses, really focusing in on the suicide problem that we have right now. Um, our focus has been on connections, trying to make sure our airmen are connected to somebody so that if they're having a tough time, if they're having a challenge, they have somebody they can go to and lean on. And we absolutely need the entire community's um, initiative and good ideas to help us continue to try to solve this problem. This is a tough one, and we're still trying to get after it. Um, finally, we have a little bit of a reprieve over the next couple of weeks before we get really, really busy again, and so we're trying to take advantage of that. Um, and then what we're going to do is uh, 
We're going to send crews out to Antarctica to start our deep freeze operation again, supporting the National Science Foundation. And we're expecting another big POTUS move over the fall time frame. So um, the hits keep on coming. Business is good. We're really happy to have you, though. Um, it was really fantastic to get Colonel Duncan over yesterday. We took him out on a C-17, showed him um, Moses Lake, our best training field out there. Um, and really talked about some challenges and issues that I think we're going to get after together. And Sky, we really appreciate you and your team coming over to do that. So thank you. It's great to be here with you th this morning. Thanks so much. That was, that was an amazing training opportunity. And we uh, were able to take some Army folks with and drop them off. They did some training. Air Force got some training. CSM and I and, and uh, Sully and Joel got some, got some awesome. It, it, was a, it was a perfect synergy. I loved it. Um, and thank you also for your, your, your talk about uh, the importance of Moses Lake and the importance of Sela Airstrip out, at, uh, out in Yakima specifically as we, uh, as we build, the, build up those capabilities. And, and, and to General Valesky's point and to your point as well, as you all, as this ramps up and we start sending people forward on deployments and on you know, sort of day, you know, the, the daily battle rhythm that you all maintain globally, um, that is what we are here for from Garrison. So all of myself and all of my leaders, I, I, I want to know, please, what we can do to support the families while you are forward, while, this, while the airmen and soldiers are forward. So please, uh, I, I guess I'll just say that again as something maybe you can throw out at the end. Think about it during the meeting. Throw out what you need from us. If it's something specifically in Garrison Update or, definitely, or more broadly, please, please send that out to me. All right. Airman Witoff, we're gonna uh, we're gonna say a congratulations really quick to uh, to an airman. And so, Chief, if you want to come up and uh, introduce him and tell us a little bit about what he's done to support our base and the community, and then I want to uh, want to give him a coin. Hey, thank you, sir. Uh, I'm Chief Master Sergeant Sternod from the world's greatest aircraft maintenance squadron. In case anybody uh, didn't didn't know, I'm here to. Introduced to you one of our outstanding maintainers, uh, A1C Timothy Whithoff. Um, I think he will tell you that he started his Air Force career a little bit later than, uh, than we typically would. He did the college thing. He did, was doing the civilian cubicle life, and he said, you know what, I can do more. So we joined the Air Force, uh, and he became a communication and navigation uh, specialist. And if anybody doesn't know what that is, so the, the equipment on the aircraft that gets our air crews over a target anywhere in the world, on time, on target, and oh, by the way, the countermeasures that ensures that they get back safely, those are his responsibility. So, sir, if you had any faults yesterday for Cobb Nav, it's his fault. I okay. It was flawless. Flawless, perfect. Uh, so he came to us about a year ago, um, and there's a lot to the Cobb Nav system. There's a lot to learn. Obviously, it's very, very technical. Uh, but even then, he said, you know, throughout this hall, there's more I can do. So he got involved with Airmen Against Drunk Driving, uh, did a lot of, both as a driver and a dispatcher, uh, and then he heard about an opening on the Executive Council, the Airmen Against Drunk Driving Executive Council, and he said, you know what, I can do more. So he took on a role as the secretary of the uh, AADD as well, um, and he's just been knocking out of the park. So he's knocking out of the park at his job, knocking out of the park here at JBLM. Uh, oh, by the way, he is very into uh, fitness, and he likes to get out and hike. Uh, so he goes out and did a seven-mile trek recently for the Nisqually Indian tribe, honoring uh, the Nisqually uh, Indian uh, heroes. Uh, and he also did a 5K color run up in Seattle, uh, making money for local charities. Uh, so he's, he's doing it all. He's doing it at work. He's doing it on the base, and, uh, and he's doing it in the local community. So we're just so proud of him. We're so happy that we can, you know, recognize him here in, in front of you all, uh, and very proud of him. Thank you, sir. Okay, um, Colonel Stainpine didn't say that uh, here coming up in January, there's actually going to be a change of command at the wing. And I was just thinking about that as we were honoring uh, Airman First Class Whithoff. So, 10 January, right? So, I, 
don't want to, I'm not trying to steal your thunder, but she's going to be the uh, wing commander here at 10 January, and so we're going to have to start preparing to say farewell to, uh, to Colonel Curran, um, and then uh, Colonel Stainpine will take over on, on 10 January. That's all I have. Let's, uh, Alicia, you got it? Thank you. Good morning, Jim Bay's team. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Tim Scheffler, uh, Deputy Director for the Directorate of Public Works here on JBLM. I uh, just want to provide a quick update with regards to the I-5 construction. Uh, on September 23rd, they started the noise wall construction, which is basically going to protect Hillside from some of the noise coming off of I-5. But in the process of doing that, there's going to be construction and construction vehicles setting up that noise wall on Hillside uh, from September 23rd all the way through November. Uh, once they finish that part right here, and there's a should be a handout on your desk, uh, once they finish that section right there, they're going to come down here and do the section that's just south of JBLM main gate. So, barring any questions, and just, I guess, for bigger picture, the Madigan interchange will be completed on or about sometime in February of 2020. And then the logistics gate uh, just north of that will be completed, or that whole interchange will be completed in October of 2020. Again, this is a, uh, a far-reaching project that's going to span many, many years. Any questions? All right. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Major Dave Nugent, the Deputy Provost Marshal for the installation. And over the last few weeks, the JBLM police have been tagging abandoned vehicles throughout JBLM, and on 15 October, any abandoned vehicle that's tagged is going to be towed and removed from the installation. Uh, if there's a vehicle in your areas that you think is abandoned, please contact the JBL police and we'll tag it and then tow it on the 15th. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Joe Peake, the JBLM Garrison Public Affairs Officer. Uh, back in March, we mentioned this. We have been taking nominations since January, and we have about 30 more days, actually 29, to accept, accept nominations for the JBLM Civilian Hall of Fame. This is a program that goes back to the early 2000s, and it's an opportunity for units on base, agencies, and others to nominate civilians who have been made an extraordinary uh, contribution to JBLM service members and military families and the base for three or more years. This is not for DOD civilians, these are for people off base. And you can see our first nominee, our first five inductees were Norm Dix and uh, Doc Hastings and others. Most recently, last year, Mary Finley, who ran Suits for Service Members, uh, was inducted into the Hall of Fame. So we still have uh, the rest of this month to get nominations in. You can contact me at the JBLM Garrison Public Affairs Office, and I'll be happy to send you the nomination information. Any questions? Thank you, and have a great JBLM day. Hua. I'll be followed by Madigan. And here he comes. There you go, sir. All right. Good morning, everyone. How are we doing, sir, ma'am, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much for taking time out to hear some of our discussion today. I'm Colonel Tom Bunt, your commander, Madigan Army Medical Center. I have my team in the house for the questions that will more likely than more than likely come up good. There, we got Julie Martin here. She's holding the left flank. And let's go to the next slide, please. Okay, this is open enrollment season. So most of you, hopefully this should not affect. So if you're enrolled in TRICARE Prime, do nothing, right? If you're in Select and you'd like to be in Prime, this is an opportunity to enroll. Remember when you enroll in TRICARE, once you do so, you're locked in for a year, right? So this is an important time to keep in mind. If you haven't done that, do so. This doesn't, this doesn't count new folks to the installation that are transitioning their actual enrollment. Next slide, please. Oop, popped over one. Bounce back one. Bounce back one. So there you go. Other direction. There you go. There you go. There's your do nothing. Enroll in a plan. And if you want to change plans and so on and so forth, that's why Julie Martin's here. This is an important connotation to take, folks, because we manage 110,000 enrollees. Okay, that's more, you know, that, that's larger than pretty much every base I've been assigned to which gives you an idea of what locations I've actually been assigned to. And that is an enormous population to manage. So we got a lot of folks that are really working hard to do that, and Julie Martin's making that happen for you. Let's go to the next slide now. 
Now, this is important, right? Two weeks after I arrived here, I got a card in the mail that said, enroll to U.S. Family Health Plan. But that's not even my own facility, so that makes absolutely no sense. If I enrolled in that health plan, I couldn't seek care at Madigan, okay? That is in the network, that is not at Madigan, so that's very important. A lot of people make this mistake, and we're here to make sure that that doesn't happen. And we're always in this program around 1,000 or so uh, at the time, and I think that's about it. So it's pretty much uh, settled. Okay, any questions on U.S. Family Health Plan? Okay, Julie, can I have you come up here for a second, please? The only difference is if you have a quality life-changing event and you want to switch over, you can. Julie Martin's been doing this for a minute, and I wanted to take an opportunity to coin her in front of you and everybody else here, right? So public embarrassment is always really good. Julie actually used to actually be my boss. Right, she's a 70 Charlie, retired colonel, used to be chief, oh sorry, 70 Alpha, and partly Charlie now too. And she used to be the chief of staff at Madigan Army Medical Center. I want to give her a big round of applause. Thank you so much for everything you've done. Appreciate you. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, flu season. This is always a good time, right? Everyone's lining up, they're very excited, okay? This is one of those things, if you do get your flu shot, make sure you get that little piece of paper that tells you the date, time group, and usually they put the actual vaccine uh, serial number on there. Those uh, vaccines have not been put out as far as publication for a date yet. We're still waiting for the stockage to arrive. When it does, we'll be sending out mass communication, letting you know. In the interim, there are pharmacies in the network, TRICARE pharmacies in the network that can provide this vaccination. Uh, and again, uh, the list of them is once you hit on TRICARE, it provides what they are, Walgreens and so on and so forth. Just make sure that you go to the pharmacy, you do not pay an administrative fee. That used to be an old thing that folks would do, $10, $20 fee for a vaccine. That's a no-go, right? That's no-go terrain. If anyone ever encounters that, please contact us, uh, Julie Martin, Sergeant Major, or even myself in that matter, and we will rectify that situation for you. Next slide, please. Okay, this is also uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We have our folks here from Mammography Clinic, Ms. Jones and team over there sporting some awesome Madigan gear. So if you're interested in purchasing that too, they could talk to you about that. But this is important, this is 25 years, folks, this has been a certification program, 25 years. And the second longest running DOD uh, cancer program in, in our system. These folks know what they're doing, and if there's an issue, they will spot it, right? So make sure you're doing your preventive maintenance checks, if you will, in this regard, and visit those ladies at the, at the table in the back uh, when you have an opportunity. And yes, this does affect men as well. Next slide. Okay, October is also Depression Awareness Month, not Depression Month, okay? I know it's the Pacific Northwest. Don't let that get to you. This is an awesome place to be. I'm probably the only one out here smiling when it's raining. It's all good training, right? But we do have a lot of resources available, right? And it's also taking care of your buddy and to Colonel, what, what uh, stain, paint, paint, where are you? There you are, right? As she mentioned, this is a very difficult problem set to get to the left of, right? And so if you have challenges or you have questions or have issues, please bring them up. We have forums to present this at. We have a lot of uh, groups that meet and kind of figure out how best to address this issue. Uh, real professionals, real good people. Next slide. Okay, school-based health system, right? We always have interesting challenges with access this time of year, right? But we don't have challenges with access in this system. Right now, the school-based health system access is not really being tremendously well used, right? And if those of you kept an eye on a calendar, as of yesterday, I actually belong to the Defense Health Agency. Right? That's a new enterprise. That enterprise is based on efficiency and use of resources and systems in a manner that's consistent with good stewardship for government resources. If we don't use these types of systems, they tend to go away. So I would tell you, if you have any kids, anybody have any kids in these schools? And Bethel, okay, I see a lot of hands raised. Please tell me that's where they go get their appointments because they can get almost everything done there, right? One of the nice benefits of the parents love this program once you're doing it. The kids hate this program which is why we never survey kids, right? I mean, get to the left of them, right? So this is really good, and we're talking school physicals, we're talking flu shots, we're talking referrals for even behavioral health, talk about things that they're not gonna talk to you about, right? You all know what I'm talking about? This is why this thing is such a benefit, so please take advantage of it. When you call the appointment line, you search for the, the code to get a school-based appointment, you can do it right from the phone. Next slide. Okay. We have a 24-7 eye care uh, nurse line as well, so as we come into this season, whether it's flu or what have you, rather than everyone drowning in the emergency room, a lot of times you can call and talk directly to a registered nurse, and they could hook you up right there over the phone and tell you where to go, and if you can give over-the-counter type of things uh, for advice, there's the option one on there as, as it's relayed. Next slide, please. 
Access to urgent care benefit, this is important. We put this out. Oftentimes, a mistake is made, and I'm glad Sergeant Major Marble is here because he actually mentioned this during the newcomer's brief, which we were attending in force to make sure we're kind of keeping in compliance and come to find out that sometimes soldiers, airmen, sailors, they go to urgent care. That is the wrong answer, ladies and gentlemen, because you will end up with a bill, right, that is for family members, right, that is not for service members, right, and it's important to understand how those uh, elements work, so we kind of put a little thing on here for you to help guide you and then to help guide families. It's just a little cheat sheet, if you will, okay. It is a very rich benefit, however, for the family members to be able to use urgent care, especially when access is difficult and it's the time of year, it's the PCS season, it's a tough season, and a lot of people moving in. If you need to get something done and you're not able to get into your primary care provider, this is a great option for you that was not available just a few years ago, right? Next slide, please. Okay, so Madigan happenings out here, and this is open pretty much to everyone across all, um, the entire spectrum here, right? We usually have about 1,000 uh, kids showing up for our Halloween festivities in Maine Madigan. As you can see, that is going to be a carnival on the 26th of October. Uh, that's a Saturday, and it is gangbusters, right? They have tons of things in there. They've got uh, magicians and things like that and, and scary houses, and some of my clinics turn into haunted houses, which is odd because sometimes they just turn the lights off, and that's it. That's the haunted house. You go in there, wow, that is masochistic. So it's pretty cool, and I encourage all of you have kids, if you're interested in doing that, you want to try something new, Check this out. It's a good time. I've never seen anything like it. Uh, it took me a while to find my kids once I brought them there. It was good training. It was good training. Next slide. And pending any questions, any concerns, thoughts, I'm, I believe I'm up with you, ma'am. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, good morning again, everyone. Alicia Grady, Director of Personnel and Family Readiness. Um, every year we take an opportunity to uh, participate and make a difference day, which is the last Saturday of, uh, of October every year. Um, so we have a volunteer opportunity here to uh, help restore the Prairie Oak Preserve. So volunteers are needed to go out there and just basically do uh, yard work, um, essentially. So you can sign up uh, online. The information is right here at Eventbrite. Um, and we're always looking for volunteers. Last year, I think we had about 75 volunteers come out for this, so um, it really does help. And my clicker's not working. <laughs> Guys. Um, I just want to mention, I know that um, sponsorship for Army and Air Force uh, is always an issue, uh, not only getting sponsors, but making sure that sponsors are trained in what it takes to be a good sponsor. We offer sponsorship training. We will come out to your units, we will come out to your squadrons, we will come out to your FRGs, wherever you want us to come, we will provide training for you. We do not assign sponsors, as you know, that is a unit and commander responsibility, it's all done online, but we can help you train your sponsors so that you have quality sponsors to match with folks who are coming uh, to the JBLM community. So please take advantage of this opportunity that we have for you. Hello, I'm Kathy, Directorate of Public Works Environmental Division. I'm the Sustainability Outreach Coordinator. On your tables, you're going to find this little handout. Don't make your trash JBLM's problem. Anybody who's been driving around, as we've already discussed, has seen stuff sitting out by dumpsters that doesn't belong there. Just letting you know that JBLM has um, varieties of different ways to deal with the problem. We do have an illegal dumping email, so if you see something, go on to our JBLM Environmental Division website, send an email to the trash cop. Let's get on it. Um, we have, if you live off base, don't bring your trash from home to JBLM, right? We'll take your recyclables at the recycling center. So if you have extra boxes, that old barbecue you don't want, something we can turn into money, please bring it to us. We'll take books. We turn around and give away 1,000 books at Kids Fest every year. And at Christmas, we give out additional Christmas books. So again, we'll take all kinds of different things at our recycling centers, but we don't want your trash. If you live in the barracks, call our recycling outreach and hook up through the environmental division website. There's email addresses, there's all kinds of phone numbers. We want to make sure we're doing it right. So on the back side of that handout, you're going to see there are all of the ways that you can go to the nearby landfills and you can take care of that stuff there. Let me know if you need extra copies to put those up in your barracks or to send them down. 
um, the chain I'll be happy to supply. Next slide, please. Yeah, and see that QR code? That's our JBLM recycling brochure. Just letting you know that that QR code's there, and it's also on the website. So we also have an environmental guidebook talking about crushed oil cans or recycling anything you got. All right, we're going to talk about Go Lewis McCord. So again, Go Lewis McCord is the alternative transportation program that's here on JBLM. In these pictures, you can see 40 people going different ways, by car, by bus, and by bike. So making sure that you're utilizing this wonderful free service. Again, it's free to any DOD. Um, you know, anybody who's got DOD access, there's the QR code to get you hooked up to the schedule. It is online, golewismccord.com. And I think I'm missing one slide. One more slide. This should be an energy one. Okay. So today, October, is Energy Action Month. I put little... Uh, again, flyers on your, on your tables, ones to take back and hang up, talks about all the different ways you can be energy proactive. And then we're also having an energy poster contest. So this is for kids in JBLM schools, grades one through five. And it's good through, um, we're taking entries through 12 October. This has always been a really well-supported program. And it's a lot of fun because the kids get their art ex displayed at both exchanges. And um, we have a nice big award ceremony with all kinds of goodies um, to give out so I hope you participate. We do have an energy waste hotline, so we're about to get to the dark time. So as you're driving out of JBLM and you see those lights left on in the motor pool or something's, you know, the heater's left on and you're not sure how to turn it off, give us a call. It's an anonymous phone number, and we'll, DPW can get out there and take care of it. We also have an email address, and if you want to hook up to our building energy monitor program, we can totally dial you in. All right, any questions for me? Thank you. Good morning, Nancy Barnes with um, Public Works Garrison Housing, and we're going to talk about the Headquarters DA Family Housing Survey. They have decided instead of doing it annually, it will be now semi-annually. So residents will be getting an email uh, prior to 12 November when it's opened, and they can take that survey, and it does close on 12 December. We'll compile all that information, and hopefully we'll see some uh, positive information, but we also will look at the negative and try to improve um, what is currently in the homes and some of the services. So we do look at all that. And then the results will be released on 1 February, and so hopefully in the February community update, we'll give you those results. Next slide, please. So we have a uh, renovation starting up in Hartwood, and we did, uh, Lincoln did two prototypes. Uh, they're ready for a open house. Um, they have agreed to have the residents of that area, because it is junior enlisted housing, to go through there, give their opinions, kind of look and see the exciting new um, uh, amenities that they have in the homes that they currently don't have. These are homes that are along I-5 that some of you may see with the grass growing on the roofs. So hopefully um, that will get all taken care of during the renovations. Uh, so that is happening on 16 October and open to all residents. Um, what's not on the slide is we scheduled a command walkthrough on 21 October at 1330. Uh, we would like to invite command to come out and actually see what the renovations that uh, is being done for junior enlisted uh, uh, service members. Next slide. The Housing Services Office, uh, the government office here at uh, JBLM, uh, is going to start taking appointments only for the uh, rental partnership program. And what that is, it's a program that the Housing Services Office, uh, who uh, amazingly services 70% of the uh, service members on JBLM. And that is going to be by appointment only uh, because the staff has, uh, is short uh, dramatically. Um, that renter partnership program, if you don't know what it is, it's an uh, agreement between the service members and the landlord along with housing services office not to charge a deposit 
other than a pet fee or a pet deposit, and they don't charge for credit checks. So it's, you know, buying, you know, prorate your first month's rent and you're in as long as you're eligible. Okay, so, and, and again, that's for 70% of all service members on JBLM. So uh, scheduling online is up there. You can call that number, um, be patient, they'll get back to you. And uh, the appointments are made on every day, it looks like, uh, from 0900 to 1500, excluding holidays, federal holidays. Any questions for me? Great, y'all have a great day. Good morning, Kelly Wetzel with MWR. I say this every month, there are so many things happening this month. So um, we, have, we have ganged up some of the activities so it's easier for you to get to. A lot of Halloween things are all happening on the 26th. So Nightmare at Summer Cove is what we're calling it. Three spooky events, one spooky location. Uh, Summer Cove will host Trunk or Treat for the kids. We will also host the zombie run starting there. And third, we will have the haunted house over at Shoreline Park, the, the boss program, and they'll tell you about that in, in a little while. So if you are looking to register for the zombie run, you need to do it. it. This is the most fun. You have options. You can either run from the zombies or you can be a zombie and run after the runners. So you, you've got the choice now. Uh, and then other things that we've got going on, the Madden NFL 20 tournament on Saturday is open to active duty only. They still have some spots available, and I know we talked last month about this being a really good um, job skills workshop for when they get out of the military. They can go and play games professionally. Um, but we will have the eSports TV on location there, um, and it, again, is for active duty only at the Warrior Zone, so they need to register before Saturday. Um, German Buffet, happening on the 16th of October here in this room. If you did not get enough German food at Oktoberfest last month, this is your second opportunity. Um, Rouladen, schnitzel, spetzel, uh, German potato salad, bratwurst, the whole nine yards, all you can eat here on the 16th. Next slide, please. So while that's coming, I'm going to pull out my phone. I don't usually bring my phone to briefings, but I just loaded the JBLM 360 app on my phone this morning. This is your opportunity to get information about everything that is happening within MWR on base. So if you look at it, it's got rewards right up the top there, rewards. So you can check and see, hey, I am... 10 cups of coffee away from getting a free cup of coffee at a Battle Bean. Or I am nine burritos away from getting a burrito at Habanero. Um, there are all kinds of things that you can get through the rewards program on the JBLM 360 um, app. It also has news and events. There's a calendar. There's hours of operation. There's phone numbers, direct phone numbers. You just tap it, and it gets you right to the folks that you need to talk to to get information about what's happening on base. Um, and then there's all kinds of information about activities that are happening off base as well. Next slide, please. Coming up in November, the first of November is Dia de los Muertos. We're having a Latin night over at the Sam Adams. Um, the UFC 244 is free at McCord Club here, and it's also free at the Warrior Zone. Um, see, there's a family dance. We used to have mother-son dances and father-daughter dances. Um, this is a family dance. Everybody dances at this. So uh, it's, a, it's a fun opportunity for you to bring the family and, and get out there and, and work out on the dance floor. We've got a job fair coming up on the 5th of November. The turkey trot, and can you believe Thanksgiving is just around the corner. The turkey trot is coming up next month. Um, and that leads right into Thanksgiving buffet here at the club. If you don't want to cook, you don't want to clean, you just want to eat, this is the place to come to. And so now at the bottom there, I'm going to change hats. I am also the private organization manager for JBLM. So if you are part of a private organization, if you are part of a booster club, an informal fund, an FRG, any of those, this is your opportunity once a year to raise funds for that group officially. So um, any on-base 
private organization can participate. You are going to wrap gifts for donations at the McCord Exchange and the Lewis Exchange. So uh, we have two shifts per day from the day after Thanksgiving to the day before Christmas. Um, so in you rip, wrap gifts for donations. The exchange provides ribbon, they, ex they provide wrapping paper, you provide the bodies, the tape, the scissors, and go to town for folks who just don't have time to wrap their own gifts. So on the 11th of October, there will be an announcement released on the MWR Facebook page with everything that you need there to sign up for this. And then signups begin on the 1st of November. It's all done through Eventbrite, so it's all done electronically. Um, if you have any questions about anything, I'll wait around afterwards and we can talk about it then. That's all I've got. Thanks. Thank you. All right. So as everybody knows by now, after seeing my wonderful face for the last several months, I am the JBL and Boss president. Thank you, everyone. Uh, but first and foremost, I would like to introduce and recognize the new JBLM Boss secretary, PFC Harper. She has wonderfully decided to join us from NTC in her wonderful unit. So she, you'll be seeing a lot more of her around here on the installation. Thank you. All right, so what, it, what did BOSS do in this last month? So for community service, we did Suits for Service members back on the 3rd. We, did, we went out and helped at Oktoberfest with all of the root beer floats, uh, keg tosses, great, great activities. We all had a blast. And then the designated driver program, once again, we helped a total of 23 servicemen and women across this great installation not get DUIs. It was a great day, great time. Next, please. Uh, recreation and leisure, life skills. We had food for all. We were able to go out and participate in that. That was a great time. Uh, big shout out to the community. They, it was amazing. It, it, the, I always say that there's, there's always a story. Everybody has a story in the military that they tell and others want to experience that. They want to know what that was like. Fufara is one of those events. You go, you'll go to your next installation, you'll tell people about it, and they're like, I want to go to JBLM to go to the Fufara. I want to experience that. That is something I want to go do. And that, that's the way I saw it. It was amazing. Uh, we had a wonderful visit from uh, Mr. Herschel Walker himself over at the Warrior Zone. Uh, he came by, talked to us about how to mentally prepare and mentally be resilient through not only the trials and tribulations that we face day in and day out, but also in how the civilian world and his only eating one meal a day goes and drinking Coca-Cola. We also had a wonderful time out at the State Fair and we got to see uh, Sierra in concert. And I didn't know this, but Sir Mix-a-Lot was also there that night. And so I got to enjoy the musical lyrics of that great individual. I was there for Sir Mix-a-Lot. I wasn't there for Sierra. <laughs> uh, next slide, please. Yes, that is correct. He is from Seattle. I did not know that either. Uh, so October, what do we have coming up? So just yesterday, we went out to Stellacum for the Suits for Service members. Had a great time. Uh, please be aware that any service member transitioning out of the military here at JBLM is eligible for two free sh suits to continue looking professional in the civilian world. Uh, they just have to go to the um, Hawk tr Career Center. Career Center. Thank you, Sergeant Major. Uh, to be eligible for that. We still have haunted, pre haunted House Prep over at Shoreline Park going on. Saturday will be our last big day of getting at it and getting good. It's coming along beautifully. We need plenty and plenty of volunteers. Uh, there's a volunteer flyer on everybody's desk. If you need more, please come see us. We are located over there at that end. Uh, it'll list what we need for volunteers. We also have a walk in the walk in the dark in sh at Shoreline Park, the actual flyer, which lists our days. So if you want to come out, get your kids a good scare, our goal is to always watch parents abandon their kid on the haunted trail. It happens every year. I'm not, I'm not joking. It happens. And the usual response is, we'll make another one. Um, <laughs> uh, so we... Uh, on October, it's supposed to say 5th, apologies on that, we had a change. Uh, the 
outdoor rock climbing. We will be going out to exit 38, uh, provided with uh, instructions from the Northwest Adventure Center to educate us on how to scale a rock wall using only equipment with no safety harnesses. Sweet. It will be safe, don't worry. Um, we also have the JBL and Main Thrift Store if anyone would like to come assist us with that. We will be going out sorting and organizing all of the donations that come into the thrift store to help them and the great resources they provide. Uh, like I stated, starting in October the 11th, we'll have our Walk in the Dark at Shoreline Park. We need a lot of volunteers for that. So we did the math roughly. We're gonna need 50 to 60 volunteers a night for that activity. Anyone can come out to that and volunteer with us, whether that's uh, spouses, married individuals. Um, you can bring your children as long as they're of the older, over the age of 16, but you must be with them for the scaring events. Uh, we will not have your children or your dependents separate from you. You must be there. That is a liability issue. We apologize for that. But like I said, it's going to be a great time. We've got clowns, we've got a haunted house, we've got dolls, we've got a blackout maze, uh, we've got zombies, we've got gang warfare. Uh, next, Veterans Transitional Home. Like we said, Zombie 5K, uh, always a great time. And then we'll, starting on the 28th of October, we're gonna start tearing down our haunted house. Uh, barring any questions, next slide please. I believe it's the chaplain now. Yes, uh, barring any questions, I will be available Later today. Thank you. Good morning. Chaplain Brandt here, uh, Garrison Chaplain. Um, we have a couple of things I'd like to bring to your attention. The first one, uh, Jewish holiday, High Holy Day coming up. Uh, Yom Kippur starts next week, so Tuesday evening is a kickoff on that at the Main Post Chapel. There'll be an additional service on Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock and uh, uh, 5 p.m. as well. So that, that's available for our Jewish community. I don't have a slide for this one, but uh, our Buddhist community uh, would like to announce that there will be a celebration of the last day of Buddhist Lent, and that will be on the 12th of October, and they'll be celebrating at 1500 at Soldier's Chapel, and everybody's invited to, to attend that. They'll be chanting blessings, meditation, uh, mindfulness activities as well, so um, those two activities are coming up. Yom Kippur and the Buddhist ending of Lent Day. We also have at the end of the month, next slide, our um, Grace Gospel Congregation hosts this every year. It's our Harvest Fest. It's going to be at the MWR Fest Tent starting at uh, 5.30, so it's before all the kids are released to start walking the, the streets and knocking doors kind of stuff. But uh, at the Fest Tent, there'll be lots of activities, games, giveaways, Lots of candy to get them sugar-fed and, and energized to, to get ready to start walking the streets and, and uh, uh, the neighborhoods. Uh, that's all we have um, for the RSO, unless there are any questions. Thank you. God bless. Good morning. Mike Cruz from Accord Commissary. Uh, just a few updates. On the 18th and 19th, there will be a warehouse sale for uh, Halloween candy. There will also be some goodies for the kids if they come in with costumes and stuff like that. Uh, next slide. Um, anyone that's on WIC uh, has been notified by the WIC office that uh, they'll be transitioning from the paper WIC to a, like a credit card WIC. Uh, it's already in, in motion. It, doesn't, it wasn't effective to today, but I saw mid-September it already started. Um, and the WIC office should uh, give you information on that. But both commissaries are up and running for the WIC card. Next slide. Uh, starting next week, both commissaries will be having uh, all international holiday candies and foods. Uh, and if, everything from German stuff uh, that will be up and running by next week for both commissaries. That's all I have. Any questions? Thank you.
Good morning, JVLM. 57 days before Black Friday. We have a list of events that we've, uh, <laughs> before we um, start our, fifth, our fourth quarter kickoff, uh, fifth, which is Saturday, uh, the Right in the Rain demo is 11 to 1300. Uh, the 12th is our Halloween fashion show. Uh, customers are invited, so you could call the store or see myself or Christelle if you want to sign up to be in that um, fashion show. You're invited. The Night Eyes demo is also on the 11th through the 1300. Uh, we also have Hamilton Beach on the 18th. In addition to our 18th October, we have um, our fashion trend book that's $10 off, $60 purchase, and $30 off our $150 purchase if you use your star card. Next slide. If you're looking for extra spending money, we are hiring. Um, just contact our JBLM off HR office. It's, the number is 253-964-2522. Next slide, please. And a little update on our uh, renovation. Starting February, March time frame, the front entrance, south end, we have our grand opening, and the vendor front entrance is March, uh, April time frame, and main store is the end of next year. So we'll keep you posted as uh, time goes if any changes arise. And I forgot to mention we had one addition to one of our events from yesterday. All you gamers, we do have the Call of Duty which is a big, big uh, release in the month of October, is going to be on the 25th. Any questions? Thank you. Good morning. My name is Siobhan, and I'm from Joint Base well, Joint Personal Property Shipping Office over here on Lewis, Maine. We are the back office to the counseling office. We have two counseling offices on JBLM, which one is located on Lewis, Maine by Wall Hall, and the other one over here on McCord Field. Um, today, we're gonna, I'm going to speak with you about two issues, two common issues that we've been seeing over the past couple years, and especially during this peak season. Next slide. Pro gear. Every day we receive at least two emails from service members needing a change in their weight because Pro gear wasn't annotated on their inventories. Um, and also, or trying to claim Pro gear that's not actually considered Pro gear. You cannot claim computers, you know, plaques, awards, coins, any memorabilia, furniture. Uh, when you're getting ready for your move, it would be in your best interest to just, you know, separate all of your Pro gear into one area so that way when the movers come over, they can properly annotate it on your inventory sheet. On top of that, uh, recently this year, the DTR was changed and now the pro gear can be annotated on the inventory sheet with either the, cube, the cubic foot, which is you only get seven pounds per cube, or weight, they don't have to annotate both. We recommend to service members to have them weigh your pro gear because you only get seven pounds per cube which sometimes the weight of the pro gear is more than that. If they don't have a scale with them at the residence, you can use your bathroom scale. Um, when you sign your inventory sheet, if there's not pro gear on there, then you're taking responsibility saying there was no pro gear and you did not have pro gear. Because we, we receive a lot of inventories where the members are claiming that they had pro gear, but we see nothing annotated on there saying pro gear. Next slide. Common issue that we had this year was, because I work in the quality, quality assurance division, and we had a lot of messy and dirty houses. When the movers come over, they can refuse to pack a house that is messy. Items on the kitchen counters, items on the floor, clothes on the bed. The house, when they come over, the house has to be ready to be packed. They're not going to pack dishes from your dishwasher, whether they're clean or not. They need a... Uh, you know, a clean counter space so they can work and pack your dishes up. 
items on the floor, they're not going to pick up items from the floor, your kids' toys or anything from the floor, and they can refuse them. That's just going to prolong the move, especially during peak season. Dirty houses. Um, that's been a big one this year. They've both been on post, off post, you know, higher ranking, junior enlisted. We've, we've had it all. We've had from, you know, dirty dishes in the sink, feces, urine, diapers, odor, roaches, um, rodents, mouse, mouse feces in the garage. If they see mouse feces in the garage, they're not, they're, they can refuse to pack it. If they see roaches, they can refuse to pack, and you will have to pay to get it professionally fumigated prior to them coming back and packing your household goods. And dirty dishes. Another thing is when it comes to like the bad odor, and the reason they, don't, they won't pack up the household goods is because it's a liability to them. The agents don't want for their movers to go in there and possibly get sick from you know, whatever is in the house. But that, that's it, if you have any questions. Uh, my recommendation would be if you're PCSing or if you know someone who is PCSing, just let them know because it, it, it alleviates a lot of issues and stress on both the member and the moving companies. Thank you. Good morning all, my name is Andy Bacon with the Lighthouse for the Blind. Uh, Bay Supply Center is here on JBLM. We are hosting a Customer Appreciation Day on October 25th at our main post, Bay Supply Center. It's at 2072 Pendleton Avenue. Uh, it's right near the thrift store, uh, North Division and, and Pendleton. Uh, it will run from uh, 1100 to 1800. We will have food trucks out. Uh, vendors out, giveaways, uh, treats, and we will also have our very own Steve Stavanovich here uh, singing. He's a very accomplished singer. His band will be there. We're appreciating all of our customers that, that are the best customers in the world here on our J at our JBLM Bay Supply Centers. And we also welcome all of the community to come out and have some food and have some fun. Next slide. Hi there, my name is Steve. I'd like to talk to you about our uh, fire extinguisher program. And uh, first and foremost, we run the program to ensure that we keep soldiers and their families safe. Um, the extinguishers, uh, the service we provide is maintenance on uh, fire extinguishers, and the maintenance may include uh, a recharge, a yearly inspection tag, or um, a disposal. And also, you can buy new from our store. And to have us come out and give you a free quote based on what you may need for your building equipment and or, um, what's the other thing? Equipment and vehicle, yeah, fire extinguishers. All you have to do is stop by any of our locations and uh, fill out the form. And um, I'll call you to schedule a free quote to get your uh, extinguishers done. Thank you. Hi, I am Jamie Lynn Bloom, and I'm happy to be here from the Lewis Community Spouses Club. We talked about a lot of units and squadrons with some movement coming up. What can we do while our service members are gone? You can come to Spouse Club events. Our next event is our annual costume party. This is one of our most attended events of the year. Um, registration has been extended to this Friday, so you can still go on our website and register. We have about 15 different units, forward slash brigades, forward slash squadrons. I think we have some Air Force spouses coming this year um, who are coming, and it's going to be right here in this room on October 10th. We have a lot of prizes, best dressed individual, most attendance uh, like per group, best costume, and there's a table decorating contest. Next, we have our Nerf Wars. This is a new fundraiser for us that we want to include our family members. All DOD families are invited to this. So if you can get on post, your kids can attend. We have two slots, ages five to nine, and then ages 10 to 14. You bring uh, safety goggles for your kiddos to wear. They have to have them all the time. 
um, and a Nerf gun. We provide the bullets, we provide the targets. There will be pizza um, coming, sponsored by Geico, coming from Domino's, a bottle of water, and a cookie. There is a waiver. You have to register online to come to this. You could please do not show up the day of and not have this waiver filled out. We don't want to turn away any kiddos. Uh, so go ahead. It's $10 a person. It's going to be over on North Fort. So it says CYS Gym. I think it's the Youth Services Gym that's over there. We have more information on our website. And I also, real quick, we don't have up here our holiday market. It's a big bazaar that we do off post at Lakes High School is on November 2nd. We have about 80 some vendors who are signed up. So if your spouse does crafting, um, has a cricket and makes signs, makes wreaths, or has their own business, we would like them to come showcase their wares. Um, November 2nd Holiday Market is on our website. And really quick, since we are over here on McCord, we are the Lewis Community Spouses Club. As of last year, there was a McCord Spouses Club and they dissolved. So just because our name says Lewis Community does not mean that we don't um, recognize our Air Force and other service members who are in this area. So we are open to all spouses of service members, regardless of the branch, um, active duty, reserve, retiree spouses. Uh, we can't just change our name on a win, but that is on our, we're looking at doing that in the future. So please, if you have a spouse who is looking for a place to foster healthy friendships, looking for a support network, please consider us. We have monthly events. Um, and we love to have more diversity in the Lewis Community Spouses Club. I will be around for just a little bit with anyone who has questions. I heard they say the best for last. My name is Lisa Hallett, and I'm the executive director of Wear Blue Run Tree Member, and I see a lot of familiar faces. But I wanted to take a moment and reintroduce Wear Blue. And Wear Blue is a running community across the country that's designed to empower our families of the fallen, support our men and women in uniforms and their families, and also to always honor and remember the service members who've made the ultimate sacrifice. We have dozens of communities around the world from Iwakuni, Japan, um, to our backyard right here at Joint Base Lewis McCord. And so we meet every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. in Powder Works Park in DuPont. We start each community run and walk with a circle of remembrance and then we go for a three mile family friendly walk or run. But it's open community, it's a way to support our military and have something that is healthy and active for our service members, our families of the fallen, and of course our community partners. And so we invite you, your units, your families to come join us. And if you have not come, please come. Any shirt is fine, but join us on a Saturday morning. Because even if it's not the right fit for you, it might be the right fit for someone who is in your unit and their family. We also have a program called our For the Fighting Race program. We take junior enlisted service members and we train them to run their first endurance event. We fly them out to the event, we partner with the Travis Mannion Foundation, provide mentorship over the course of the weekend, and of course, um, provide the tools necessary to complete an endurance event. And so we are looking for partners in the community to identify young enlisted service members who are returning from their first combat experience to be a part of that. And then our third program is the one that I'm here asking for your help today. And it is our Gold Star Youth Mentorship Program. And we launched this four years ago right here in our backyard at Joint Base Lewis McCord. We're sponsored by the Seattle Seahawks and USAA. Um, to make this a reality, we've expanded to Fort Bragg and San Antonio. But we take our children of fallen military who are here right outside the gates of Joint Base Lewis McCord, and we pair them with currently serving members of our armed forces in a run-focused mentorship. And so we start right now recruiting mentors and because we do careful screening and background checks to make sure we're creating safe, healthy matches for a very vulnerable population. And then starting this March, they're gonna join every Saturday morning with a dedicated, each youth who has lost a parent in military service will be partnered with a dedicated active duty service member. And they will train over the course of March, April, and May um, to run a 5K together. They go on a field trip to the installation, but it's all about building healthy coping mechanisms, resilience, and a sense of identity in the aftermath of loss. So my ask for you today is one, if you know somebody who would be a good match for a child who has lost a parent in military service, send them over to the Wear Blue Run to Remember website and have them sign up for this program. I also want the opportunity to share this message, message with your communities, either in person, at a family readiness meeting, or at a steering committee meeting. 
And if you have social media or communication that's going out, we want to make sure that our communities, our troops know that We're Blue Run to Remember is an active, healthy support network in our Saturday Run community. But we're looking for well-intentioned mentors who would be a good match for our children who've lost a parent in military service. Thanks. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Garrison Sergeant Major, Sergeant Major Marble. So the map you're looking up uh, at up here, it uh, covers the training areas and it covers the containment area. So this is the old map. Just to make everybody aware, this is under revision right now. It is changing. All the Brigade Sergeant Majors had buy-in. Whether you were there or not, you had a chance for buy-in, and it's under revision. Uh, it's currently being updated right now by Master Sergeant Hodges at uh, DTAMS. And then it will go back to the core G3 sergeant major, and it will be published very shortly out in the fall cleanup. All right, and that is what uh, General Valesky was talking about earlier, where the housing areas were broken down into brigade responsibilities. So a brigade will oversee housing areas for cleanup. Uh, it was not very well aligned. Uh, for example, I'll just use 593rd. 593rd uh, division, or their headquarters is one area, but the NCO Academy was responsible for cleaning that area up. Didn't make sense. Um, so we realigned the colors in the area of the unit responsibilities. So again, that will be coming out in the fall cleanup. Uh, all the brigades are majors will have one more chance to look at it to make sure that it makes sense and all the lines are in the right spots. So just to make everybody aware of that. Thank you. Okay. On your table is a ton of information. Museum. More information about the MWR run and the app, the JBLM. Remember to download the JBLM 360 app. I told you last time, last month, we're going to be, we are going to drive towards being more technological. This is our first step, and you see some QR codes up there. You'll see more of those as we as we progress on through the Garrison Community Update schedules, which is also on your table. All the future schedules, scheduled Garrison updates. The um, Thank you, Kathy, for the update on the environmental uh, updates. And our, in, in, our infra installation sustainability board is a key place where we gather all of the environmental concerns of the base. And that's where that uh, please don't make your trash JBLM's problem comes from, is that looking deeply into the amount of trash that we receive on the base that has nothing to do with base operations. The, uh, thank you also from the Lewis Community Spouses Club and the Wear Blue to Run to Remember. Outstanding support from our community. Boss mentioned all of the activities they have coming up, and they mentioned one thing that I wanted to reinforce. The, the, they, all the activities they have, the outdoor activities that they support, and he, one of the things he mentioned was an outdoor rock climbing trip. We also just recently opened the indoor rock climbing wall right here on McCord Field. Um, uh, that is open six days a week. The schedule is online. Outstanding facility. We literally just opened four days ago, I think, five days ago. Um, reminder also about the housing survey. Please take it. Please reinforce to your family members and airmen and soldiers to take that survey. It is twice a year. Probably takes you 15 minutes, but the impact of that is DOD-wide. You've seen the impact of that. We need the input on that, please. And then uh, also a reinforcement about the housing walkthrough. Even if you don't live in Hartwood, please come give your thoughts because they can. Ch this is why they're doing the walkthrough is to get input to maybe change something. You know, they can't physically change the the skin of the house. That's but they can change everything internally. And the, you'll see the amazing work they've done with. You'll see an old and a new, uh, and the new is is amazing. The, what they were able to do. I can't envision that stuff. I can't walk into a space and say, the bathroom should be there instead of there. But th those guys do that. They, but they need your input, so please go and, and take a walkthrough of that. All right. Um, before I ask for, any quest ask for your input for future updates, and I got my notebook here to take your thoughts. Before I do that, uh, ma'am, anything else from CORE or from you? Sir, anything from Division? Thank you, sir. And Colonel Stainpine, anything from the wing? Okay. Okay, let me open this up for a couple seconds then. Please give me your thoughts on what you want to see at this update or anything you want to see across Joint Base Lewis McCord. Hey, I'm wondering, uh, we've heard a lot of. Um, 
probably misinformation about the DHA transition, about where our spouses are going to be able to go to get medical care soon. I'm wondering if there's an opportunity for an update in this form or another form, maybe from Colonel Bunn. Yeah, Colonel Bunn's right there. Yep. Yeah. Ma'am, where you receive your care now is where you're going to receive it in the foreseeable future. Does that settle everyone's concerns with that? DHA should be a seamless transition to everyone in this room. That is the intent and that is the mission set, right? At minimum, it's going to take about a year to 18 months for them to work through all the transition elements till they bring all the MTFs on board, DTFs, all VTFs on board, which are about 600 some odd entities. So right now, my orders are standing, we're, we're pushing full steam ahead. And I have executed every penny of my budget, <laughs> $636 million of it. But I was off by 1000 bucks, so you'll have to forgive me. There's always next year. 99.8%, not 100%. Thanks, a good question. I know a lot of people were, were interested in that. All right. Please email us at any Sir, of the... Sir, I'll, yep, I'll, ha I'll help out McCord. So is uh, the exchange still here? So exchange, the Air Force is going into the new OCPs, uh, and their exchange, does not, clothing and sales, does not have the uniform, so they should be able to buy it from Lewis Main Exchange. Are we tracking that on Lewis Main Exchange? I know the higher headquarters for the exchange is tracking, but are we at the lower level tracking? Roger, I just want to make sure the community's all tracking. Roger, and making sure we all know that because that's going to affect Air Force and Army. So when we, we start to go short on this, it's going to affect everybody. Yeah, good catch. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. You've seen lots of different avenues to connect. You've seen lots of different avenues to have input. And I look forward to seeing you all next month. Thank you.